Hi, this is Eric with BC Gurus, and this is part six of Web Forms. This video covers the email marketing fields and related functionality. It's going to be a little shorter than some of the others because a lot of the information, the detailed stuff on email marketing, is covered in the email marketing video series we do. Uh, this one is just going to cover the form stuff, which is admittedly kind of basic, but uh, we'll cover it just to be complete here. Uh, the first part is going to talk about the the different list fields and uh, how those work and what your options are with regards to those. And uh, then we're going to talk uh, briefly about a few customizations you can make. Uh, most, uh, the big customization related to email marketing is uh, disabling the double opt in feature, so we'll cover that and uh, maybe a couple other things as well. So let's jump right into uh, Business Catalyst and see how this is all set up. So we're back in the web form editing interface on our site and we're back with uh, our, just our test web form. I've removed the e-commerce field so we're just back to a uh, normal default form. And uh, the email marketing uh, and related fields are in two different sections back here. We've got the email campaigns tab which I'm on right now and we have the list tab uh, which is where the list options are. now. Uh, on email campaigns, you've got the refer a friend field and the different anniversary dates. Uh, these anniversary date fields are uh, more or less just uh, date fields along with the title. And uh, there's nothing particularly special about those. They're stored with the contact record. And uh, you can view and manage those in the CRM. And uh, they're primarily used when creating email loyalty campaigns, doing special types of scheduling. And uh, that's beyond what we're doing in this video. So you'd want to refer to the email marketing video series uh, to get more details on those. But as far as collecting the information from the user goes, you can add these different fields. You've got five of them. And you can add those to your form and collect data that will be appended to the contact uh, data in the CRM, uh, much like you would do with uh, the other built-in CRM fields. Uh, the refer a friend form field is actually a set of email addresses you can use, and the idea here is that you can enter in your friend's email addresses and uh, they'll be sent a link to uh, the site or the page, and it's kind of a uh, social thing. Uh, these days, it's more common probably to integrate with uh, the Facebook sharing and things like that, uh, but you do have these built-in uh, refer friend uh, fields that you can use. The uh, other part of the email marketing related fields is in the list section. And this is where you can come to uh, add certain email marketing lists to your forms. And the idea there is that when someone fills out your form, they'll be subscribed to the list or they'll be given the option to subscribe to a list. And you can see these uh, in the mailing list section. Again, this was covered in detail in our marketing uh, video series, but I've created two email marketing lists and these lists hold and group my uh, different subscribers together. They're just called Test List 1 and 2 uh, for demo purposes. And you can see that here, Test List 1 and 2. And you can add these uh, one at a time like that. You can add a, a second one. You can mix and match and uh, do all sorts of things like that. Um, when you, by default, if you just put the form uh, like this and you were to put that onto the page, they'd see pretty much this interface with the checkboxes allowing them to subscribe to one of these lists optionally. Um, you can also, kind of like we did in one of the previous videos, you can customize these so that they're checked by default and optionally you can hide the fields as well. And the idea there being is that you want to add everyone who fills out this form to a specific list. And uh, when that happens, a couple uh, different processes are kicked off depending on how you configure the form. Uh, the first thing to note is that uh, once the user has submitted the form, in addition to getting a thank you message for filling the form out in the first place, they're going to get a second email asking them asking them to confirm their subscription to the list. And that whole procedure is called double opt-in, and the idea is uh, you want to make sure the user was explicitly asking and approves to be on this list before you start sending them marketing emails. If you don't want that functionality, you still need to add these uh, fields to the form, but you can check them by default and hide them. And there's a way that you can disable the double opt-in functionality so that they are 
it's essentially bypassed and the user is automatically opted in regardless of uh, the response to that email. In fact, they won't even uh, get the double opt-in request email. So we'll go ahead and add one of these to a form and uh, I'll show you what that kind of looks like and then I'll show you how to customize it so the double opt-in has been uh, disabled. Now we're back on our test page where we had previously inserted our e-commerce customized form and it's a good time to point out that when you put a form on a page and you insert it using the default method where it just places the HTML on the page, making changes to the form in the web form section uh, will not update these forms automatically. That's the disadvantage of not placing a form on a page as a module. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and delete all this stuff out and uh, reinsert this form. Just clear out this extra HTML that the editor didn't get. And I'm going to reinsert this form. And again, I'm going to use the default instead of a module so that I can quickly get to the code because we're going to make a little customization to it. Uh, but you can see once you insert it again, the added subscribe to uh, list one in this case has been added to the form. So we'll just update this and uh, refresh our test page over here and you can see we're back to our basic form and we've got this uh, checkbox on here indicating we may or may not want to subscribe to this list. So as I said one of the common things we do is hide this field, check it by default and disable the double opt-in. So let's, uh, let's come back here and get our HTML code for this form and we'll go back to our online editor and uh, check that out so you can see those customizations. So we'll go ahead and uh, copy all of our uh, code in here and we'll paste it back into our editor, maybe. And now that we've got uh, the code in here, we're going to find that uh, checkbox. You can see it's right down here. It's just an input checkbox. And again, because we want this to be filled out by default, we're going to come in here and do checked equals checked. And that's going to set the default option on the checkbox to actually be checked. And then we're going to hide the field because we don't really need to see it anymore at that point. So just again, display nuns. And then we're going to come up to the top here and we're going to do one thing to the action result. And the action is, uh, if you're not familiar with how forms work, the action is uh, the URL that the data will be sent to when the user clicks submit. So all this information up here after the form process v2.aspx, uh, that's special uh, BC uh, coding that uh, lets BC know how to handle this form. And most of the time you can just leave it to the default. And in this case, we're going to come to the end of it and we're going to add an option to it. And uh, you just do this by adding the ampersand and then opt in, O-P-T-I-N, uh, all caps equals true. And what this does is it says that when the user submits the form, bypass the double opt-in, go ahead and subscribe them to the list. Don't send them the uh, the email that confirms whether or not they want to be on the list. So you just simply add that to the form action. And uh, again, the customizations down here, and then you can take your uh, code and paste it back into your editor. And those changes uh, will be persisted when you update the page. And now this time when we come back to the form and refresh it, that field's disappeared. It is on there, it is checked, you just can't see it. And now when we submit this form, the user's going to be added to a list. So let's go ahead and do that right now so you can see how you can manage these in the back end uh, for the CMS. So we'll fill that out, we'll hit submit, and you can see down here there is an indicator that it says campaign newsletter subscriptions, test this one. That means uh, the user had selected that list or they had been signed up for that list in this case. And uh, so they will see that even if you've hidden the field. Uh, let's go back over to the CRM. And if I come over to my customer details record, I can see all the lists this person's a part of by going over to the subscriptions tag. And uh, you can see I'm actually subscribed to both lists, uh, test list one and two. That's from some previous data that I had put in here. But uh, normally you would just have this test list one if that's the only thing the customer had been subscribed to. And uh, you can manage that uh, just back here under the subscriptions tag. So uh, no big surprises there. Everything's uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, again, you can find more details about this in our uh, email marketing video series.